Uh, dear students, I welcome you for the session 4 of module 4, Feedback and Oscillator Circuits of Analog Electronic Circuits. Myself, Nataraj Vijapur, I am working as Associate Professor in KLE, Dr. M. S. Shishigiri College of Engineering and Technology, Belagami. We will be continuing with the next session. Okay. So, the session 4. So, we are discussing basically here module 4, which is comprises of feedback circuits as well as oscillator circuits. We have already covered feedback concepts in the previous session. We discussed the significance of feedback. Open loop amplifier is not stable, feedback is required to make it stable. Okay. We have seen what are the advantages of feedback as well as we have seen the disadvantages of feedback. We have also seen variety of ways the feedback is done. What essentially we do in feedback? We either sample a voltage, give it back to the input or we sample a current and give it back to the input, such a manner to oppose the input or a negative feedback or to bring it, this acts as a correction factor, this acts as a corrector, correction factor and controls the output. Okay. So, we have discussed the feedback connection types and in previous session, session 3, we discussed about practical feedback circuits. We started with voltage series configuration, we discussed voltage shunt configuration also we discussed current series configuration. Coming to this session, session 4, we are discussing practical circuit for current shunt feedback configuration. We will be discussing about the next important constituent oscillator, its operation and then the RC phase shift operation oscillator. So, these are, this is what we are going to cover today or cover in this session. Okay. Now, at the end of this, having studied the current shunt feedback configuration also, after this session, you should be able to analyze feedback amplifier circuits. Having, having introduced to the oscillators, you should interpret the operation of oscillator. You should be able to design, importantly, you should be able to design the phase shift oscillator for the required frequency. Okay. So, this is the first outcome expected, second outcome and th third outcomes, three outcomes are expected out of this session. And for in order to prepare the content, the technical content, we have referred four textbooks. So, we have uh, Robert Boylstead and Lewis Nashelsky, Electronic Devices and Circuit Theory, Pearson Publications, Sedra and Smith microelectronic circuits, especially for feedback we have referred it, Millman and Halkis, integrated electronics, Pakshi and Godseyev, analog electronics. Okay. So, these four textbooks we have referred for this module, entire module, feedback and oscillator circuits. Let us begin with the first aspect, current shunt feedback. Okay. So, the current shunt feedback aspect, we have already discussed previously also. The current shunt feedback, any feedback kind of circuitry, just uh, recall those concepts, any feedback circuitry consists of an amplifier and then a feedback network. So, what is the parameter to be controlled here in current shunt feedback is current is the parameter to be controlled. Input is represented as a current source. Okay, and output is output is taken across the load resistance R L. So, the feedback network attenuates the current. You can see the output, output of the feedback is represented by I F okay, and input to the feedback, which is the output of an amplifier is represented as I naught. So, the job of feedback network is to take a sample of this output current, mix it such that it subtracts from the input current source. So, I have I i, which is I s minus I f here, okay, that is fed as an input to the amplifier. 
सो वाट इज रिक्वायर्ड बेसिकली हेयर बेसिकली इट इज रिक्वायर्ड टू कंट्रोल द लोड करेंट सो वाट इज द फीडबैक नेटवर्क शुड बी डूइंग हाउ द करेक्शन फैक्टर शुड बी अप्लाइड इफ लोड करेंट इंक्रीजेस अकॉर्डिंगली द फीडबैक करेंट विच इज टैप्ड शुड इनक्रीज सो दैट इनपुट करेंट टू द एम्प्लीफायर इंक्रीजेस एंड द आउटपुट ब्राउट बैक टू इट्स ओरिजिनल वैल्यू सो इन केस एनी देर आर चेंजेस इन द आउटपुट अकॉर्डिंगली द फीडबैक नेटवर्क शुड जनरेट अ करेक्शन फैक्टर दैट इज ऑल अबाउट फीडबैक नेटवर्क okay now we, we we were studying having introduced the topology the main objective of this session is to discuss the practical circuits which involve current shunt feedback okay so this is one example of a practical circuitry which involves current shunt feedback so you can see what here you can see two amplifiers two transistor amplifiers connected in cascade such that output of one amplifier acts as an input to the next amplifier why we need to connect cascade we need to connect the amplifiers in cascade in many applications what is the aim aim is to increase the current gain aim is to increase the strength of the signal aim is to boost the signal or aim is to give a enough power to the signal okay so practical world requires that signal which is processed has to be enough amplified so that load speaker can be driven okay so the input here you can see the input signal vs here it is applied between base and emitter of the transistor okay so this transistor the role of this transistor is to just amplify this input signal and output is available at the collector so input signal is applied to the base the collector current changes beta times proportion to the input current so ic will be equal to beta times ib so what you will get here amplified output this amplified output is given as an input to the next amplifier so this collector current acts as a base current for the next transistor amplifier so what this transistor amplifier will be doing it will be amplifying this input and the output will be obtained at the collector now there is a feedback here now the aim is to increase the current current strength is amplified but with respect to some parameters such as temperature frequency distortion we need to control them for that feedback should be applied so where is the feedback so i have a feedback here so the feedback is via the you so you have an emitter terminal feedback is given via emitter to the base via resistance r dash so this is the important element a feedback between output to input so which element is acting as a feedback here once again you can see the resistance re the resistance re which accounts for stability we have discussed that resistance re always brings in the stability so output is tapped via this resistance re and one more resistance and it is connected to the base current okay so these two transistors are cascaded okay and hence feedback is given feedback is achieved you can see that input current ii is a difference of is and if so accordingly the feedback network draws more current or less current depending on the output here so accordingly ii will be varying and hence the feedback can be achieved here so if load current tries to increase then the feedback current also increases proportionally ii decreases and vice versa okay so this is how the feedback is brought in okay so current shunt feedback is a very important aspect it brings in stability okay so till now we have discussed four kinds of circuits we have discussed about practical feedback circuits we have discussed about voltage feedback 
वोल्टेज शंट वोल्टेज सीरीज फीडबैक वोल्टेज शंट फीडबैक करंट सीरीज फीडबैक करंट शंट फीडबैक ओके सो वी हैव डिस्कस्ड वोल्टेज सीरीज फीडबैक करंट सीरीज फीडबैक वोल्टेज शंट एंड करंट शंट ऑल इन अ मैनर टू अपोज द इनपुट सिग्नल दैट इज द नेगेटिव फीडबैक सो ऑल द नेगेटिव फीडबैक कॉन्फिग्रेशन वी हैव स्टडीड ओके नेगेटिव फीडबैक ब्रिंग्स इन सो मेनी एडवांटेजेस विच कैन बी वेरीफाइड विथ ऑल दीज पैरामीटर्स गेन विथ फीडबैक वी नो दैट फीडबैक ऑलवेज ब्रिंग्स इन द स्टेबिलिटी बट एट द कॉस्ट ऑफ द गेन okay gain with feedback will be reduced it is reduced in voltage series feedback also current series feedback also voltage shunt configuration also current shunt configuration also okay for all these configurations gain will be reduced always why gain is given by af is equals to a divided by 1 plus a into beta so that is the expression for the gain so gain always reduces stability stability is improved we have seen in case of voltage series voltage current series feedback configurations also re the resistance re which is present at the bjt amplifiers the resistance okay and in case of f it is it is drain resistance in case of op amps that is feedback so that is how the stability is improved here frequency response also we have seen uh, basically in the negative feedback frequency response improves amplifier may be reactive okay amplifier may be reactive but the feedback register network if it is resistive and the product a into beta is greater than 1 we have seen that you have you can achieve a good frequency response frequency distortion is also reduced in case of frequency response bandwidth is improved in all the four configurations bandwidth improves by a factor 1 plus a into beta let it be op amp circuitry let it be fet circuitry let it be bjt circuitry all three kinds of circuits will have a feedback factor involved which increases the bandwidth so higher cut off frequency will be postponed and lower cut off frequency will be pre pond okay that is how the frequency response gets improved or bandwidth gets improved distortion as i discussed distortion will be minimized we have seen noise also cancelled and linear behavior of bjt's fet's op amps all these circuits improve because of negative feedback let them be connected in any kind of configuration okay so uh, feedback brings in a lot of stability okay so along with that it brings in improvement in frequency response reduction in frequency distortion noise and non linear distortion we have also seen that so this is a, a very very important all kinds of configuration now it is up to you whether you want an voltage amplifier or a current amplifier depending on that you can decide about which parameter you want to uh, feedback voltage or a current and depending on that any kind of configuration you can pick before picking any kind of configuration you should think about input and output impedances also in variety of circuits okay we have already seen this voltage series feedback configuration uh, for interface to logical circuits it is required that its input impedance should be large and output impedance should be minimum so that is being achieved here accordingly current series voltage shunt and current shunt feedback also the different variety of input impedances and output impedance depending on the limits you can pick up anything and you can design your feedback amplifier okay so uh, this is how uh, we can complete this feedback chapter okay so this feedback chapter got over so we discussed about feedback concepts feedback connection types practical feedback circuits so out of this module in this module feedback amplifiers got over okay next element what we are going to start is
oscillators. I hope this is all we have covered this data, you have copied it, we will move to the next aspect, oscillators. The next unit, very, very important aspect, say oscillators are nothing but waveform generators. Oscillators are the heart of communication, okay. any communication system to perform, oscillator is the required element. Oscillators are applied in all fields of electronics and communication engineering, even your laptops, mobiles have inbuilt oscillator, without an oscillator neither your laptop, neither your PC, neither your mobile, neither your communication system, none of them work without an oscillator. Okay. So, design of an oscillator as an electronics engineer is very, very important. You should know how an oscillator should be designed and importantly, how stability again uh, should be provided to oscillator. Okay. Um, in this unit, we will be discussing about the oscillator operation okay, to begin with. FET, field effect transistor, phase shift oscillator, okay, vane bridge oscillator, tuned oscillator, crystal oscillator, UGT oscillator. Okay. So, these all elements we are going to discuss. Okay. Um, all these oscillators are used in communication in your electronic equipments especially the importantly crystal oscillator as well as LC oscillator which are tuned oscillator, they are used in the your uh, communication equipments. UJT oscillator is used in power electronics applications. So, all these oscillators are very, very important from an electronics engineering point of view. Okay. So, if you, you can remember at the beginning of session 1, we discussed about feedback. There are two types of feedback, one is a negative feedback and another one is a positive feedback. We have seen the negative feedback. Negative feedback is successfully employed in the design of all the amplifiers. So, all amplifiers make use of negative feedback. The aim there is to control, aim there is to provide stability, aim there is to improve the input impedance. Aim there was to stability of an amplifier, but now the aim is to generate an oscillator, oscillations. So, aim is to make the circuit uncontrollable. Okay. Circuit, if it is made uncontrollable, then only it breaks up into oscillations. If you want a circuit to make it uncontrollable, to trigger it into oscillations, then you should employ a positive feedback. Okay. Very, very important element, positive feedback. So, this figure shows the block diagram of the positive feedback, which we have discussed previously. You have an input, an amplifier, feedback network and an output. What is the change here? small change, but it is a big change. Amplifier remains as it is, it was there in feedback amplifier. Here also in case of oscillators, you have an amplifier. Feedback network was there in case of amplifiers, here also feedback network is there. But here we are generating the output to feedback network, whatever parameter it is generating, it is adding, there is a positive feedback it is adding to the input to generate the output. So, the important element is here plus or input adds to the feedback. In, in fact, you will later on we will see that oscillators does not require any kind of input, that is very, very important. Okay. These oscillators, they do not require any kind of input. Okay. So, oscillators work without any kind of feedback. In fact, oscillators make use of DC voltage. Okay. So, this feedback voltage acts as an input voltage for this oscillators. So, it was very, very important element 
Okay. So, here you have feedback, which is playing a very, very important role. Okay. So, next uh, we will move to the important aspect, principle, principle of operation of oscillators, that is most important element. Okay. How the oscillators work? For any kind of oscillators to work, I think we have to exit. We have to go back. We have to go back. Okay. Fine, fine. Yeah. To begin with oscillators, we have classification of oscillators. We should know what all types of oscillators before I discuss the working of oscillators. Types of oscillators are very, very important. You can have depending on the oscillations type you want. You want sinusoidal oscillations, you want a square wave oscillator. Okay. You want a pulse oscillator, you want a sawtooth waveform. Depending on that output waveform, also oscillators are classified. So, you design of sinusoidal oscillators requires a different strategy. Designing of a square wave as well as pulse waveform, sawtooth waveform, these all require a different type of output waveform. Depending on the circuit components which are used to generate oscillations. Okay. So, we will see that the feedback network depending on the LC circuit, if inductance and capacitances are used to generate oscillations, then those are called as LC oscillations. If you use resistance and capacitance, those are called as RC oscillations. If you use a crystal, it is called as crystal oscillator. Okay. So, depending on the circuit component which is there, you can classify the oscillators. Depending on the range of frequency also, oscillators can be classified. If you want a medium frequency or a low frequency, you have RC oscillators. If you want a medium in terms of few megahertz, LC oscillators are there. If you want in terms of gigahertz, crystal oscillators are there. So, depending on the range of frequency also, you can classify. And we were discussing so much about feedback. We were discussing about so much feedback. Entire oscillations are, oscillators are dependent on positive feedback, except one oscillator, which is UJT oscillator. It does not require any kind of feedback. Okay. So, depending on the presence of feedback also, you can classify the oscillators. Okay. So, there are four categories. So, we can classify oscillators on these four categories. Before we start with any kind of oscillation, the important element here, which comes in case of oscillations is Berkshaw criteria. Okay. So, this Berkshaw criteria is the important criteria, which is to be satisfied. If satisfied, then only the circuitry breaks into oscillations. Okay. What Berkshaw criteria states? Berkshaw criteria or Berkshaw criteria says that total phase shift around the loop should be 360 degrees. Okay. What this 360 degrees indicates? always in case of signal operation, when we say positive feedback, when we say that input as well as output, okay, if we refer back, when we can say positive feedback, when input and the output of feedback network are in phase. What do you mean by in phase? In phase means 0 degree. They can, they will be added if both are having a 0 degree phase shift or 360 degree phase shift, then only these two can be added. So, that is called as positive feedback, the very, very important concept here. Okay. So, the total phase shift should be 360 degrees, then only it becomes a positive feedback. And total loop gain here should be unity. 
what all loop gain consists of? Loop gain consists of here an amplifier A, an amplifier which is having gain A and a feedback network which is having gain of beta. So, the product of A into beta which is very, very important that is the loop gain should be equal to unity. If the loop gain is unity, then only the oscillations are generated in the circuitry okay, and they will survive in the circuitry. So, note down this block diagram. So, what all block diagram consists of? You have an amplifier which is a inverting amplifier which is of a gain A then a feedback network. Okay. So, what is important element here? So, this figure demonstrates you Berkshawn criteria. You have an inverting amplifier you can see. What an inverting amplifier does? Inverting amplifier introduces a 180 degree phase shift. So, here oscillator consists of an inverting amplifier. So, inverting amplifier introduces a 180 degree phase shift in the input. Okay. It is having a gain A and you have a feedback network. Feedback network is having a gain of beta. So, what you can observe here? Output is fed back to the input as well as you can tap the output here. Output can be tapped here as well as it can be fed back. Oscillators do not require any kind of input. Okay? There is no input here. That is an important element to be noted. There is no input. The feedback voltage only acts as an input voltage here. Okay. So, if at all once the oscillations are generated, then if they have to survive, you have already designed that loop gain is unity. Loop gain in the sense A into beta should be equal to unity, product of open loop gain of an amplifier and product of the feedback network, both should be equal to unity. At the same time, if an amplifier introduces a 180 degree phase shift, feedback network should also introduce a 180 degree phase shift. So, that total 180 plus 180 together becomes 360 degree, because what is one more condition? 360 degrees or 0 degrees phase shift should happen. Okay. So, this is very, very important. If you want to have 360 degree phase shift, then this amplifier, inverting amplifier and feedback network, the phase should be added 180 plus 180 will give you 360 degree. Loop gain should be unity. As it is V i is equals to 0, there is no input voltage. So, this is a Berkshawn criteria. What is the change if we are using a non inverting amplifier. What is an inverting amplifier when we talk about inverting amplifier? We talk about 180 degree phase shift, because inverting amplifier has a 180 degree phase shift present between input and output. Okay. So, if you take an example of a BJT transistor amplifier, between base and collector there is a 180 degree phase shift in the signal. If you take F it is between gate and drain, there is a 180 degree phase shift. If you take an op amp being connected in inverting configuration between input and output, there is a 180 degree phase shift. So, if the waveform is at the input like this, then it goes 180 degree phase shifted at the output. But your feedback network also receives this and it gives you the feedback network also introduces a 180 degree phase shift. So, both are in the same phase. So, this only acts as an input to the inverting amplifier. Okay. So, you have a 360 degree phase shift. On the other hand, if I make use of non-inverting, non-inverting in the sense it will have a nose 180 degree phase shift. It will have a 
0 degree phase shift. So, if there is a 0 degree phase shift introduced here, then the feedback network should also be designed such that it also does not introduce any phase shift, then only there can be positive feedback. So, you can design with non inverting amplifier or inverting amplifier, both you can use to design the oscillator. Okay. So, this is the Borkshan criteria is the most important element. Okay. So, output of inverting amplifier. So, I have an amplifier here, okay, which is being shown V naught will be equal to A into V i, where A is the gain of an open loop amplifier. Feedback voltage is equals to beta into V naught where beta is the gain of the feedback network. If you want the oscillation to happen, then this product A into beta should be equal to 1. When I say absolute, then it is in terms of phase shift also, phase shift should be also should be 0 degree or 360 degree should be equal to 1, gain should be equal to 1. So, then only feedback voltage can act as an input voltage. Okay. So, this is about this Berkshan criteria, where A is the gain of the amplifier, beta is the gain of the feedback network. Okay. So, this is the most important element. Now, what will happen if A into beta is not equal to 1? Okay. If the loop again A into beta is greater than 1, then oscillations which will be generated by the circuitry will be always growing type. Okay. They will go on with each loop cycle, the oscillations will go on increasing continuously. You will not have an oscillations of fixed amplitude. On the other hand, if the product A into beta is less than 1, oscillations will be continuously decreasing. Okay. So, the oscillations will not survive ultimately. Uh, there will not be any oscillations in the circuitry. This is not a situation of positive feedback. If A into beta is equal to 1, then the oscillations are sustained. Okay. So, you will get oscillations of a fixed frequency as well as fixed amplitude, if the product A into beta is equal to 1. Okay. So, this is the important element here, A into beta should be equal to 1. Now, naturally, uh, we discussed, uh, we told that there is no input voltage, right? We do not have any input voltage. So, then where is the input? Okay. Feedback also should have some input to start the oscillations. Okay. So, there is a need, there is a need for input here. So, where can have, where can we have an input? Okay. So, here the most important element is the noise voltage. Noise voltage itself is a starting voltage. So, there is no external input which is provided. Okay. You can imagine, uh, uh, say when the circuitry is biased with VCC, the transistor amplifier will have a noise voltage without any input. Okay, at room temperature. So, this noise voltage or any spike travels through the loop, travels through the amplifier, travels through the feedback network. Initially, circuitry is adjusted that product A into beta is greater than 1. Okay, so, that oscillations are growing type with each cycle, then later it is adjusted to be equal to 1, then the oscillations will be sustained. So, initially, this is how the oscillations are generated in the amplifier. It is because of the noise voltage, which takes form of either sinusoidal or a square wave eventually through the loop. Okay. So, this is the starting voltage. So, we have discussed the concept of positive feedback, we have discussed the circuitry, uh, we have discussed the Berkshan criteria. Berkshan criteria is the most important element. Berkshan criteria has to be satisfied in the circuitry, then only the oscillations are generated. You have in this unit we are going to study different type of oscillators as discussed: phase shift oscillator, 
wind bridge, tuned crystal and UGT oscillators. Okay. So, all these are based except your UGT oscillator. All the other four oscillators are based on the Berkshan criteria. Okay. So, this is the block diagram, block diagram of a phase shift oscillator. The first oscillator what we are going to study is RC oscillator, a low frequency oscillator which can generate frequencies only of the audio range. Okay. So, you can see the general block diagram of this oscillator. Oscillator consists of an amplifier A and a feedback network. So, this feedback network consists of three RC sections or any RC network can be there here. Amplifier gives the output that is that acts as an input to feedback network. Feedback network generates an output that acts as an input to the amplifier. The product A into beta should be adjusted to 1 as well as the total loop gain should be 360 degree, then only the oscillations will be generated. Okay. Uh, in any kind of oscillator where feedback network is present, okay, these elements in the feedback network decide the frequency of oscillations. So, if you are using RC elements in your circuitry to design the oscillator, then the frequency of generated oscillations is 1 upon 2 pi R c root 6. So, the value of R and C determine the frequency of oscillations. Okay. And as discussed, R C elements can only generate a low frequency range of oscillations. And this amplifier, what is most important element is this amplifier. This amplifier can be B J T, F E T or an op amp. Okay. If you are using a transistor amplifier in a C E configuration, then there is a 180 degree phase shift present between input and output. So, accordingly this R C network should be adjusted to provide 180 degree phase shift, then only the total phase shift will be 360 degree. Okay, that we are going to discuss now. If you are an amplifier, if you are using which is in non-inverting configuration, then the RC network should not introduce any phase shift. But you are using in inverting, then it should introduce a 180 phase shift. Okay. So, depending on these elements, phase shift oscillator is designed. Okay. So, now let us start with first kind of oscillator, which is an R C phase shift oscillator. Okay. So, we know the behavior of R C network. Okay. If any input voltage is applied to an R C network, then the output will be such that current lags, okay. current lags by 60 degree because of capacitance, capacitance introduces a phase lag. Okay. And the phase shift, the signal undergoes when it comes out of this R C section is tan inverse of X A by R. So, you have three R C sections if we use and adjust such that each R C section introduces a 60 degree phase shift. So, I have to select phi is equals to tan inverse of X C by R. X C is nothing but 2 pi F C given the frequency, I should adjust select the value of capacitance and resistance such that each R C section introduces a 60 degree phase shift. So, once you design R and C such that each introduces a 60 degree phase shift, next R C section also introduces 60, 60 equal values of capacitance and equal values of resistances. Okay. Then the input will have a 180 degree phase shift to the R C section. So, if I have given any input to the R C section, it will undergo a 180 degree output. Okay. So, this is the uh, phase shift oscillator, it is input as well as output. Okay. So, you have given the, we have, give, we have discussed R C network. So, what R C network does? R C network introduces phase shift. If you want 180 degree phase shift, 3 R C sections each introducing 60 degree you can use. 
Okay. So, this figure illustrates our first oscillator, which is transistorized RC phase shift oscillator. Okay. So, what the circuitry makes use of? We have given the block diagram of an oscillator. It consists of an amplifier and a feedback network. So, here amplifier consists of common emitter transistor, which is biased in voltage divider bias. So, you have R 1, R 2 voltage divider bias resistances, R C collector resistance, R E. Okay. We have seen R E brings instability. For A C signal, R E may lower the gain. So, it is bypassed via one coupling capacitance C C. So, this is my amplifier, okay, a B J T amplifier or a transistor amplifier. You have coupling capacitances also. So, these coupling capacitance C C as well as okay, C in as well as C C, these provide a bypass. So, these both are C C coupling capacitances. The aim is to couple only the A C. Okay. We, we, sh we, take, we should take care that biasing or the Q point of this transistor should not be affected. For that, these coupling capacitances are introduced. Output of this transistor amplifier acts as an input to this R C network. So, you have three R C networks, okay, which introduce 180 degree phase shift and output of this further acts as an input to the base to emitter junction of transistor. This is a transistor being connected in common emitter configuration. So, you have 180 degree phase shift present between input and output. So, transistor by its nature introduces 180 degree phase shift when it is connected in C E configuration. So, now if I want to have a positive feedback, then feedback network should also introduce a 180 degree phase shift. So, that is introduced here 180 plus 180 will provide a 360 degree phase shift here. And as discussed, there is no A C input here. I am getting a sinusoidal input, but I have not given any, I am getting a sinusoidal output, but I am not given any sinusoidal input. So, the circuitry starts with a noise voltage, which is present in amplifier or may be present across the feedback network. Out of those noise voltages, one of the noise voltages, which has 360 degree feedback through the loop or which suffers a 360 feedback, that will undergo the uh, amplification and you will get the output. And further, frequency of this generated oscillations is f equal to 1 upon 2 pi r c into square root of 6 plus 4 k, where k is r c by r. So, if you are using a transistorized Okay, R C phase shift oscillator, which consists B J T as your amplifier, then generated oscillations will be 2 pi R C square root of 6 plus 4 k. Okay, that is important here. And we expect some element current gain. Current gain of the transistor should be enough. It should be greater than 4 k plus 23 plus 29 by k, which is equals to where k, where k is equals to R c by R. So, H f e should be greater than this value. In fact, it should be greater than 44 or 43 to generate oscillations in case of B j t. Okay. So, this is an R c phase shift oscillator. I hope you have copied this diagram. So, you have a transistor connected in a voltage divider bias configuration and three R C networks. These will generate a 180 degree phase shift. Further, these will also generate a 180 degree phase shift. Together, it will be a 360 degree phase shift in the output. Okay. So, we have discussed about this uh, transistor iced phase shift oscillator. The same ways you can have field effect transistor or an FET R C phase shift oscillator. What is the difference? Okay. F E T is also an amplifier. So, you can use an F E T also. Okay. So, if you use an F E T amplifier by nature, if you put F E T, 
Okay. You put your F A T in a common source configuration, if you put then between input and output there is a 180 degree phase shift. So, to counter this you need to have again an R C network, which again provides a 180 degree phase